Hi there, and welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to Marble Arch to tell you all about this iconic part of London, right at the corner of Hyde Park. My name is Steve, and each week I will bring you the facts, history and information about different parts of this great capital. If you've been to London, are planning on visiting, live here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London. And now, to this week's podcast. Marble Arch is a 19th century white marble-faced triumphal arch in London. The structure was designed by John Nash in 1827 to be the state entrance to the Côte d'Honneur of Buckingham Palace. It stood near the site of what is today the three-bayed central projection of the palace containing the well-known balcony. In 1851, on the initiative of architect and urban planner Demetrius Burton, a one-time pupil of John Nash, it was relocated and following the widening of Park Lane in the early 1960s to where it is now sited, isolated on a large traffic island at the junction of Oxford Street, Park Lane and Edgware Road. Admiralty Arch, Holyhead in Wales is a similar arch, even more so cut off from public access at the other end of the A5. Only members of the royal family and the king's troop, royal horse artillery, are said to be permitted to pass through the arch. This happens in ceremonial processions. The arch gives its name to the area surrounding it, particularly the southern portion of Edgware Road, also to the underground station. The arch is not part of the royal parks and is maintained by the Westminster City Council. Nash's three-arch design is based on that of the Arch de Constantine in Rome and the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. The triumphal arch is faced with Carrera marble, with embellishments of marble extracted from quarries near Severencia. John Flaxman was chosen to make the commemorative sculpture. After his death in 1826, the commission was divided between Sir Richard Westmacott, Edward Hodges Bailey and J. C. F. Rossi. In 1829, a bronze equestrian statue of George IV was commissioned from Sir Francis Chantry with the intention of placing it on top of the arch. Construction began in 1827 but was cut short in 1830 following the death of the Sprenthith king, George IV. The rising costs were unacceptable to the new king, William IV, who later tried to offload the uncompleted palace onto Parliament as a substitute for the recently destroyed Palace of Westminster. Work restarted in 1832, this time under the supervision of Edward Bloor, who greatly reduced Nash's planned attic stage and omitted its sculpture, including the statue of George IV. The arch was completed in 1833. Some of the unused sculpture, including parts of Westmacott's frieze of Waterloo and Nelson's panels, were used at Buckingham Palace. His victory statues and Rossi's relief of Europe and Asia were used at the National Gallery. In 1843, the equestrian statue of George IV was installed on one of the pedestals in Trafalgar Square. The white marble soon lost its light colouring in the polluted London atmosphere. In 1847, Sharp's London magazine described it as discoloured by smoke and damp and, in appearance, resembling a huge sugar erection in the confectioner's shop window. The arch is 45 feet 14 metres high and measures 60 by 30 feet 18.3 by 9.1 metres. East-west, by north-south. Buckingham Palace remained unoccupied, and for the most part unfurnished, until it was hurriedly completed upon the accession of Queen Victoria in 1837. Within a few years, the palace was found to be too small for the large court, and the Queen's expanding family. The solution was to enlarge the palace by enclosing the Court de Honneur, with a new East Range. The facade is today the principal front and public face of the palace, and shields the inner facades, containing friezes and marbles matching and complementing those of the arch. When building work began in 1847, the arch was dismantled and rebuilt by Thomas Cubbett as a ceremonial entrance to the northeast corner of Hyde Park at Cumberland Gate. The reconstruction was completed in March 1851. A popular story says that the arch was moved because it was too narrow for the Queen's state coach to pass through. But, in fact, the gold state coach passed under it during Elizabeth II's coronation in 1953. Three small rooms inside the rebuilt arch were used as a police station from 1851 until at least 1968. John Benjamin made a programme inside it in 1968 and referred to it as a fully functional police station. 
It first housed the Royal Constables of the Park, and later the Metropolitan Police. One policeman stationed there during the early 1860s was Samuel Parks, who won the Victoria Cross in the Charge of the Light Brigade in 1854, during the Crimean War. In 2005, it was speculated that the arch might be moved across the street to Hyde Park, or to a more accessible location than its current position on a large traffic island. Park Lane was widened as part of the Park Lane Improvement Scheme of London County Council, and the Marble Arch became stranded on a traffic island. The scheme required an Act of Parliament in 1958, and during the passage of the Park Lane Improvement Bill, the possibility of providing an underpass instead of a roundabout was dismissed due to the excessive cost and the need to demolish buildings on Edgware Road. As part of the scheme, gardens were laid out around the arch on the traffic island. The works took place between 1960 and 1964. Stillwater, a large bronze sculpture of a horse's head by Nick Faden Green, was unveiled on the same traffic island a short distance away from the arch in 2011. Having a tube station means that the arch gives rise to a colloquial, entirely modern London area, with no parishes or established institutions bearing its name. This generally equates to parts in view of the arch, of Mayfair, Marylebone and often all of St George's Fields. Marylebone, all in the city of Westminster, London, W1H. The London Underground station is Marble Arch and is on the central line. The area around the arch forms a major road traffic junction connecting Oxford Street to the east, Park Lane to the south, Bayswater Road to the west and the Edgware Road, the A5, to the northwest. The arch also stands close to the former site of the Tyburn Gallows, sometimes called Tyburn Tree, a place of public execution from 1388. So I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at Marble Arch. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe and get our updates on new shows. And also, please leave us some feedback. Please let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts by emailing me directly at londonvisited at gmail.com or contacting us on Twitter and Instagram at London Visited or on Facebook at The London Visited. Thanks for listening and really hope you enjoyed our podcast and we'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.